What is up guys, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're covering some more r slash am I the butthole. I've got a couple of things to say today. So if you want to skip this waffle, there's a timestamp on the time bar below you where you can skip to the first story. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too. And don't forget you can follow us on podcast too now so you can take us with you wherever you go. And you can also support the channel. Now, over the last couple of days, we've had a couple of comments saying like, oh, you're covering Am I the Butthole too much and things like that. And there's a couple of reasons why I do it. And one of them is that I absolutely love the subreddit. I think it causes some good discussions and it's also really good for the channel. I mean, if I show you some analytics to show you like how the channel has progressed since covering this subreddit, it has really grown. So I'm also really thankful for that. But also, I'm going on holiday from this Friday. I'm covering a whole bunch of different subreddits over that holiday as well. So I hope you enjoy those. And then I'm away again a week after I return. So it's a bit wild times at the moment. So I'm just doing what I can. Um, I'm just covering what videos I can, you know. But in the future, we will be covering a whole different selection of subreddits as we are a community-based channel and I wanna cover the things that you guys enjoy. Believe me on that. And with my waffle being said, let's get in to today's stories. Much love, guys. Our first story comes from Apartment Trouble. Am I the art of telling this college guy's mum that her coming into his interview cost him the job? I am a hiring manager at a tech company and I was hiring for summer internships a little while ago. We had a guy, about 19 years old, applying for a summer internship between his freshman and sophomore years of college. It was a virtual interview over Zoom because of COVID. A minute or two in, when I was introducing myself, his mum came in and introduced herself and started talking about her son's work ethic. I thought it was a little strange. I said something polite about wanting to hear from him. She just didn't get the hint and kept coming into the camera frame during the interview and interrupting her son to answer questions for him. I asked a few technical questions, which he seemed to answer well, and then cut the interview fairly short. I thought that was all over and done with until I got an email from a woman, a month later, asking about her son's application. She seemed offended he hadn't got an acceptance or rejection. It bothered me. I felt bad for the kid, honestly. Way back when I was a teenager, my mum used to pull the same shit. But luckily, she only did that when I was 15 and working for a day camp, not when I was an adult applying for engineering jobs. But I felt this poor kid was getting his chances ruined because his mum wasn't given the chance to apply on his own. I sent an email back saying I was not at liberty to send information about an application to anybody but the applicant. I also asked HR to send an email to the kid saying sorry, but we're not making him an offer. It is something we usually do, but his rejection email must have slipped through the cracks with all the COVID craziness. Anyway, after we sent that, I got a phone call from his mum. She had forwarded a copy of the email and she was demanding answers. I said that I could not comment on the guy's performance in an interview to her as she was not the applicant. If he wanted to reach out to me, I was happy to give him some feedback. However, I could say that regardless of his performance, her presence in the interview took him out of consideration for the position. We were looking for an independent and self-driven person for the position, and for that reason, it is important to see an applicant speak for themselves, follow up themselves, etc. I also said that, as a piece of advice, every hiring manager I've met in my career who sees someone other than the applicants answering questions during an interview, following up on the applicant's behalf, etc., would also put their resume in the do not hire pile, since while the applicant may be skilled and motivated, they need the ability to demonstrate those traits themselves. She fucking blew up at me over that, kind of cussing me out to the point where I hung up. Am I the arsehole for how I handled this? Maybe I should have just kept my mouth shut way earlier. In my opinion, and I've been to a lot of interviews in my time, I would feel the same way as this hiring manager, you know, if his mum stepped into the, walked into the interview and started answering questions, I think, well, there's something a bit weird here, you know? <laughs> it's something you have to learn in interviews that you have to speak for yourself. You have to big yourself up. If someone's saying that for you, you know, it just doesn't mean anything to me. I would expect my mum to say good things about me too, rip mum. So her answers basically mean jack shit. <laughs> and you know, your advice at the end to her might give a pause for thought in the end. Doubtful, but it may. And then hopefully the son will be able to get a job one day because <laughs> he's not going to get one if he carries on like that. Let's go straight down to the comments to see what we can find. Cat got your tongue said, not the arsehole. It's probably better for the kid you told her directly, seeing as she clearly doesn't respect him enough to believe him he disclosed she cost him the job. She snapped at you because you gave her feedback that painted her in poor light, and she thought she did her son a wonderful favour. You're probably the first person in the wild to stand up to her. The golden ratio says, not the arsehole. Helicopter mum need to be put in her place. Hopefully she learns. 
Sadly, while I think it's shitty someone gets put in the do not hire pile for something like that, I can completely understand why. Hopefully the young man can solve that issue and get hired on somewhere. Full Metal Blue says, bruh, not the arsehole, I feel so bad for the poor guy. Not for the job per se, but for his controlling mum. But you just did your job and she deserved the cold shower and a reasonable dose of humility. And for the first one, I'm going to turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story one. And our next story is from a throwaway account. Am I the arse of telling my family to stop celebrating? Six years ago, I met the best person in the world. She was a sweet old lady that moved in next door named Maggie. Maggie taught me how to knit. We watched Mama's family together. I helped her give her cat medicine. I helped her water her plants when she got too frail to do it herself. She knitted me a hat for every holiday. I helped her install Wi-Fi. Maggie was a nurse in World War II. Maggie passed away three months ago at the age of 94. She went peacefully in her sleep and it is the heartbreak of my life. About two weeks after she died, I noticed a man walking into Maggie's house. Maggie didn't have any family except for a nephew who lived across the country. I went up to him and asked him who he was, and he said he was going to clean out his aunt's things. That was until the end of yesterday. Maggie's nephew had rung my doorbell, and had told me that Maggie left me almost everything she had in her will. Maggie left me $1 million in an account I can open when I turn 18, most of her personal effects, and her cat, Blue, who I rescued two days after she died, and kept. She wrote me and her nephew letters. She said some stuff I'd rather not share. It tore me up about Maggie even more. She was such a gentle soul and deserved better. I started crying and I told my parents. They started celebrating about it immediately. I asked them to stop and they did. Until today, they presented me with a cake that said, hey, you get to go to college. To say that made me upset is an understatement. I get that Maggie's money is a life-changing thing, but I would much rather have Maggie. I told them to stop celebrating then. I went to my room to hold blue and cry. My brother knocked on my door and told me I was being an asshole because our parents are just happy for me. Am I the asshole? Hell no, you're not the asshole, and I'm very sorry for your loss. Maggie sounded like a, a great person. And so do you. You sound like a fantastic person as well. To look after this lady, you know, during her last years, absolutely amazing. And it's just a shame there isn't much more of that in the world right now. And clearly her will just shows how much she appreciated you, which is just, you know, brings a tear to the eye that does. And whilst your parents were um, insensitive about the whole situation, you know, I think they're just happy for you at the same time. So I'm going to say nobody's the asshole here. I know it's totally insensitive in them to do that, but I think they're just really excited for your future now. But at the same time, look after that one million because, you know, it doesn't last forever. One million isn't a whole lot in this day and age. I know it's a good chunk, but it's not something you can live on forever, I don't think. Now we're going to go to the comments below to see what we can find. First comment from Botrek says, not the arsehole, your parents are being insensitive. They are probably just happy for you, but never learn proper empathy for situations like this. They may be trying in the worst way possible to cheer you up, but regardless, they're going about this wrong and not letting you have your grief. Might be worth trying to talk to a therapist or someone about this since none of your family are giving you proper support. Useless flailing replies to this saying, they obviously care more about the money than the close friends you lost. Not the arsehole. Clark's Cat Carl says, Yes, they care about the money, but I think it's because it's such a weight lifted for them. They are obviously thankful for their deceased neighbor's generous gift to their daughter, but I think it also might be them hoping it helps her get through her sadness. They probably hate seeing Opie have such a hard time and might think they are helping cheer her up. It's totally the wrong way to go about it since she needs time to grieve. The brother is the actual asshole here, as he is mediating terribly. Opie is not the asshole. Edit, I referred to Opie as a female and nowhere in this post it said that. My bad. Also, thank you to whoever gifted me my first award. And now I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story two. Our next story is from Undo. Am I the arse for not giving my cat for adoption because my girlfriend has a phobia? My girlfriend of two years is scared of cats and I mean really scared of cats. I had this cat for seven years. At first when she came to my place, I had to take the cat outside, close all windows or doors, make sure my cat didn't sneak up to play with me or something like that. Long story short, she couldn't take it anymore and told me she feels really uncomfortable knowing that there is a cat lurking around and that she wouldn't come to my place again if I didn't get rid of my cat. We tried therapy, but it looks like therapy is for me to cope with the loss of my pet. 
I don't want to give my cat away. So last Saturday we talked about this and broke up. Now I feel like shit for ruining my relationship. Am I the arsehole? And here's the cat tax of Kitty not knowing what is going on. Edit one, holy crap, I didn't expect this amount of response. Thank you everyone for taking the time and leaving your comment. It is hard to understand that things and plans sometimes doesn't work or go the way we wanted and that is fine, that is life. It is harder when feelings are involved. Now I'm gonna have to say this from what I would do in this situation because I don't know what is right and wrong in this situation but personally, myself, if I had a cat for seven years, I'd consider that like a family member, part of the family. I would no way would I part with it over a girlfriend or anyone else, to be quite honest. It's just, it just wouldn't be fair on the cat itself. You know, you took that cat in and it's become part of your family. You can't just get rid of it. No, I'm sorry. No chance. <laughs> Let's go down into the comments below to see what they say down there. And save says, not the arsehole, but personally, if I had to choose between a pet of seven years or a girl, I'm choosing the pet 10 times out of 10. Vol Vixen says, not the arsehole, Kitty was there first and girlfriend sounds like she needs the therapy if she's going to freak out about being anywhere near a cat. Your cat is freaking adorable by the way. Ixie7311 says, nobody's an arsehole here, pets are forever. You've had your cat for five years longer than your girlfriend and I'm not sure why you pursued a relationship for so long with a huge red flag for both of you. You didn't ruin anything and neither did she unless she led you to believe that she would work on her phobia while you were together. You guys were simply incompatible. Jendi2016 says, Nobody's an arsehole here. Pets are forever commitment and your girlfriend can't help her phobia. It sounds like you two are just incompatible right now. And that's the way it is, I'm afraid. And I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story three. And our next story is from Whistling Coyote. Am I the arsehole for sharing pictures of my bathroom after my new neighbour urinated all over my bathroom, my drywall, toilet and trash can? They say they now don't feel welcome in the neighbourhood. My wife and I wanted to welcome in our two neighbours that moved in. For privacy, we will call them Blake and Jeff. We had an outdoor barbecue and had some drinks. Things were going well, we were all having a good time. Jeff and I are both into BMWs, so we had a lot in common. Blake asks if he can use the bathroom and I'm like, sure. He comes back and everything's normal. Then 10 minutes later, they say they have to leave. I think about an hour later, I hear my wife scream. I go check the bathroom and someone urinated everywhere. The seat was dirty, the drywall was dirty, our carpets were wet. I get people missed, but this was deliberate and there was no attempt at all to clean the mess. The only person that went into that bathroom was Blake. Honestly, I don't know what happened, but the only time I could imagine that would upset them was when my wife said her brother was a cop and that he was scared of doing his job, but that's it. Like our conversation was 100% PC, nothing controversial at all. My wife talked to Sally and told them what happened with our neighbor. Sally didn't believe it, so my wife sent Sally the picture and then it got shared by everyone in the neighborhood. Blake and Jeff didn't even deny it. Jeff messaged me that just because we had a conflict doesn't mean I need to go and tell the entire neighborhood. They said that as LGBT, they face enough discrimination and now don't feel welcome in this neighborhood because we needed to snitch. Like what the fuck? We had no problem with them. We wanted them to feel welcome so we invited them over in the first place and then they pee all over our bathroom. I don't even get it. Like what the fuck? We never had any beef or problem with them and they do this. I'm just confused. When we try to respond to their text, it shows never delivered, so it looks like they might have blocked us. I don't know. I don't even see myself as an arsehole for sharing with neighbours, because how in the world is that okay behaviour? <laughs> I don't even know where to go with this one. Like, because obviously OP doesn't know what's going on, so it's kind of hard to judge who's the arsehole, what was said, or anything. But for simply just pissing all over the place, you can't be the arsehole because it's not your fault, you don't know what you did. Let's go down to the comments, we might pick up some clues down there hopefully. Clance43 says, not the arsehole, if you piss all over someone's bathroom you reap what you sow. It wasn't because they were LGBT+, plus. it was because they were animals who micturated all over the bathroom instead of having a discussion like a normal human being. Ginger Bagpuss says, not the arsehole, what on gods or other deities are available, green earth did they think was going to happen? They went to their brand new neighbour's house and based on some spurious reason, Blake decided to golden shower their bathroom. And then they are shocked that Opie shared this info. In the neighbourhood that they have all lived for some time, whilst B and J are new occupants. And then they play the homophobe card, because not liking your possessions pissed all over has something to do with sexuality. There are not enough incredulous punctuation marks for this post. Definitely not the arsehole. I hope you got a discount on Mr. Muscle. <laughs> 
<laughs> OP replies, hey, I'm not sure what you mean by Mr. Muscle. <laughs> Ginger Bagpuss replies to the saying, it's a cleaning brand in the UK. I thought about saying bleach, but I was worried people might think I meant a revenge attack. <laughs> can't believe you guys haven't got Mr. Muscle. I'm kind of shocked by that. More than the story. Influenza says, uh, of course they feel unwelcome. They are unwelcome. Who'd welcome someone who was likely to piss all over your place? <laughs> oh my word. What do you think of this story? Have you got any clue why they may have pissed everywhere? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story four. And our next story is called, am I the arse of a pulling out of my daughter's wedding? My daughter, 30 female, is getting married. Even though she got engaged last month, she and her fiancé want to move fast and do a very small ceremony in September. This week they sent out their official invitations. I opened the mail and realised that instead of three, I expected I only see one for me. This is the last of a series of snubs that my daughter and her siblings have perpetuated against my new wife, 31 female, and our daughter, one. I was very upset when my daughter and her siblings, 33 female, 28 male, didn't show up when our daughter was born. And now they're excluding the love of my life and our daughter again. So I call my daughter to confront her on her snubbing her stepmom. She makes some flimsy excuse about social distancing and how she wanted it to be people she's close to only. I get extremely angry and tell her that I'm not coming to her wedding. I previously was going to pay for her cake, flowers and photographer and for the transportation for her bridesmaids if need be, but I found it impossible to be supportive when she wasn't being supportive of things pertaining to me. I told her she needed to figure out how to pay for the cake, photographer etc on her own now. She starts pitching a fit over the phone and hangs up on me. My ex-wife, 55 female, calls me to inform me I'm a narcissist for doing this and that the entire side of the family blocked me on all social media. Am I the arsehole? A lot of these things I offered without her asking, but she's been unappreciative every step of the way. We're going to head straight down into the comments with this one, and we're starting off with Adam Bomb 18 You're the arsehole. A father should love and support their children without conditions. You set these conditions to include liking your new wife. Also, you gave no reason as to why no one else likes her, which is super fishy. Her excuse is also really valid. She wants the people closest to her at her wedding, which is why she didn't invite your wife. She's just not close to her. Stop making this about you and be there for your daughter. Potentially Knox says, wife is a year older than the daughter and likely at least 20 years younger than him, which likely plays a big role here. Relevant Interest also replies saying, he stated in his comment he cheated on his ex with his new wife and his son is older than his new wife. I really wonder why no one likes her. Slash sarcasm. I need Jesus Christ says, you're the arsehole, she's a year younger than your new wife and presumably you haven't been with her for more than two or three years. She doesn't know your new wife and there's no obligation to invite someone, especially with a young child, to her wedding during a pandemic. Also info, can I ask how the relationship with your ex ended? If it was infidelity with a new wife, I can see why none of your kids want to be around her, especially since your wife is the same age as your kids. Lightwood Orchestra says, no, I totally get it. It'd probably feel creepy going to your daughter's wedding when you just married someone who could be your daughter herself. I wouldn't want to be reminded of my choices like that either. Timothy says, you married your new wife who you cheated on your previous wife with because she was pregnant with your child. That child is only one years old. So the whole thing concerning you cheating with someone 25 years younger can't have been longer than two years ago. None of your kids showed up when your daughter was born, which was also not that long ago. Why would you be very surprised they're not that anxious to have you there? I'm sorry, but once you cheat on the mother of your children with someone your children's age, suspiciously your children's age, by the way, I hope they didn't know her from childhood. You can expect some separation from the family, you know. I'm guessing this invite to the wedding was the last chance you're gonna get to seeing them for quite a while and you blew it. You burned your bridges, but I hope you're popular with the new wife's family and the other new parents. Can't be easy as a 60 year old trying to either talk to her parents who are your age or her friends who are millennials. Wow, and I think those comments clear up quite a few of the questions and you can see where they're all coming from and why they don't want them there now. Wow, what do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on the poll in the description for story five. Once again, guys, thank you for being here today. The time out of your day, as I always say, is truly, truly appreciated. Thank you once again, and I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.